It's good to have you with us for another story, boys and girls. It's always nice to be together with friends. And now, Uncle Dan, your story. Well, Aunt Sue, it's the last chapter in our four-part series about Jacob and Esau, twin brothers. You can read about this episode in your Bibles, Genesis chapters 32, 33, and 35. I call it The, the Case, Case of the Wrestling, wrestling Twin. twin. Jacob and Esau are twin sons of Isaac. Jacob, the younger twin, cheated Esau out of his birthright blessings and had to flee for his life to the land of his fathers in Mesopotamia. After 20 years in Mesopotamia, Jacob starts back to his childhood home in Canaan. He is now rich with worldly goods and blessed with a large family of 11 sons and one daughter. Jacob. Yes, Rachel, dear? You're not asleep? No. I was thinking. So was I. <laughs> I was thinking how surprised Esau is going to be when he sees you returning home with your great wealth and big family. <laughs> mm, yes. Yes, he'll be surprised, all right. He'll be surprised to see me at all. That sounds as if you don't think Esau will welcome you. He won't. You mean... Because of the birthright blessings he sold to you for a bowl of pottage? I obtained the birthright by deception. But he sold it to you? I took advantage of his hunger. Then I deceived him and father to receive the blessing of the birthright. You didn't do anything that anyone else wouldn't have done in like circumstances. Perhaps, Rachel. Yet, just because others do something is no reason why I should do it. I sinned and must pay the consequences of that sin. You've repented and been forgiven, haven't you? I have faith to believe that God has forgiven me, yes. But Esau hasn't forgiven me. How can you be sure after 20 years? I know Esau. He'll still be angry. 20 years ago, when I left home, Esau undoubtedly thought that I disappeared for good and that he was the sole heir to all father's wealth. When he hears that I'm returning, he'll think it's to claim my part of the inheritance and he'll resort to anything to retain that wealth and also to get revenge for the great wrong I did in stealing the birthright blessing. Why don't you send word ahead that that's not why you're returning? You can tell Esau that you're now wealthy and that you come in peace and friendship. Surely under those circumstances he'll welcome you home. He wouldn't believe me. I lied once and he'll think I'm lying again. But you've repented, Jacob. Esau doesn't know that. What are you going to do? I've done all I know what to do. I'm at my wit's end. So... There's only one thing to do. Cast my burden upon God. Let him handle it in his own good time and way. O oh, God of heaven, Lord and creator of all things, I come to thee in supplication, realizing my utter worthlessness. I am black with sin. Let the robe of thy light cover my sin, that I may approach thy throne of grace and receive pardon for my transgression. As the mountains of my homeland come into view, so does the awfulness of my sins appear ever before me. I ponder my sin night and day. The reproach of my conscience makes my journey sad. With the memory of my sins comes also the memory of the many favors thou hast shown me in the past, and thy promises of divine help and guidance. Now, O oh Lord, I beseech thee, come to my help. Guide me, direct my path as I approach nearer and nearer to my homeland and to Esau. Give me the... Angels. Two hosts of angels one before and one behind. They are here to guide and protect me. Oh, God, thank thee for this visible evidence of thy love and care for me in my house. I remember, O oh Lord, the vision at Bethel long ago. You saw the angels, Jacob? Plainly, as plainly as I see you now. There were two groups almost encircling our camp as if to protect us. Then we're safe from your brother Esau? Yes. But I believe that I should do all I can to secure our safety 
Grandfather Abraham often said that God will not do anything for us that we ourselves can do. What do you have in mind to do about Esau? You yourself gave me the idea. Send him a message of friendship and greeting. Do you have your traveling companion selected, Lotan? Yes, Master. Young men? Yes, Master. And you know exactly where to locate my brother Esau? Yes, Master. He is a hunter, wary of strangers, even gruff and unfriendly. I understand, Master. Good. Now then, as to the message I want you to give Esau, address him as Lord. My Lord Esau. Then say unto him, Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now, and I have oxen and sheep and flocks and manservants and women servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Is that all, Master? Yes, and I want you to be sure to remember to call him Lord and to refer to me as his servant. Yes, Master. And return as quickly as possible. I'm anxious to know his reaction. Yes, Master. Jacob, why is the exact wording of the message to Esau so important? You remember my telling you that an angel told my mother before Esau and I were born that the younger twin, I am the younger, would rule over the older? Yes. Well, if I address him as my lord and call myself his servant and tell him that I am wealthy in my own right, he may realize that I am not returning home to lord it over him or to get my share of the inheritance. Meanwhile, during the years of Jacob's sojourn in Mesopotamia, Esau, living with his idol-worshipping wives in the land of Canaan, has become a man of wealth and power. <laughs> ah, my darling wife. Hey, you look ravishingly beautiful today. Did you do something to your hair? Uh, what? <laughs> I think you're full of wine. Oh, I haven't touched a drop. <laughs> then you, you really do think I'm beautiful? I always have, since the first day I saw you. And that was over 20 years ago. You're still beautiful, more so today than ever. Oh, you're sure you're not drunk? Absolutely sure. Something's gotten into you. <laughs> well, you like me this way, eh? I love you, adore you. You're my daring, darling husband. And I'm also rich. Don't forget that. Thanks to my twin, Jacob. How rich are we, Esau, darling? Rich enough to have anything we want. Everything. It's nice to be rich. Will we always be rich? Yes. Unless Jacob returns, claims his share of the inheritance. He won't return, will he? I don't know. He's been gone 20 years. Well, even so, he might come back someday. But that wouldn't be fair. Twenty years you remain here and take care of things. Then, for him to return and take part of what you have earned. Fair or not, it's the law of our people. He'd get the lion's share of the inheritance, too. He has the birthright claim to it. Oh, you... you wouldn't let him come and claim part of our wealth, would you, dear? No. No. Absolutely not. That's my big, brave, daring, darling husband. <laughs> <laughs> Esau, Esau, wake up. Mm. It's late. Oh. oh, what time is it? The sun is six hands high in the sky. Oh, I better get up. How are you this morning? Oh, fine. As daring as ever? Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess so. I hope so. I mean, uh, there is news. Yeah, good news. Well, uh, bad news. During the night, some messengers arrived. They're from the east, from a... Yes. Well, they, uh, that is... They were sent by Jacob. Jacob. My twin Jacob. Yes. Where is he? Camped at the brook Jabbok. I thought he was in Mesopotamia. He's on his way here. Oh, Esau, Esau, don't let him take away any of our wealth. Is that why he's coming here? Why else would he come back after all these years? What did the messengers have to say? Nothing. They won't say anything until they have seen you. Yeah, well, I'll get dressed. Tell them I'll be right there. Yes, dear. may come forward. Thank you, my lord. Now then, I am told you come from the east. Yes, my lord. 
We are come from thy brother and servant, Jacob. He sent you? Yes, my lord. With a message? Yes, my lord. Jacob said unto us, Say unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban, and stayed there until now. And I have oxen, and sheep, and flocks, and manservants, and woman servants. And I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Well, that sounds like a rehearsed speech. Oh, it is, my lord. It is word for word, as Jacob told us to say. He called me lord, and himself my servant. Yes, my lord. Hmm. He, he has oxen and sheep. Oh, great herds of them, my lord. He's wealthy. Yes, my lord. I don't believe it. It's true, my lord. None of it's true. Just another of his schemes to throw me off guard. He's coming back to claim his share of the inheritance left by our father. Well, you can just go back and tell that lying brother of mine that I didn't fall for it. And tell him that I'm coming to meet him with 400 men, soldiers, well armed. Now go. Yes, my lord. He must think I'm as gullible as I used to be. Oh, you are very wise, my husband. <laughs> wise enough. Not to let that lying brother of mine fool me the second time. You're sure? Absolutely sure Esau sent no message to None you? None except that he was coming to meet you with 400 well-armed soldiers. Didn't send any message of welcome? No, master. He seemed angry? Yes, master. Would you say that he's on his way here with those 400 men to seek revenge? Definitely, Master. Yes. Oh, I'm sure you're right. The Master's brother Esau is on his way to meet us with 400 men. Revenge, that's what he's after. 400 soldiers, they're going to kill us. We'll be murdered, all of us, by the Master's own brother. Jacob, what are we going to do? What can we do? We certainly can't go back to Laban. And it looks like it's not safe to go forward. Well, we, we surely can't stay here and be massacred by your brother. I'm sorry, Rachel, but right now I just don't know what is best to do. Have we a chance to fight it out with Esau? No, we are utterly unarmed, defenseless. We'll have to do something, Jacob. The entire camp is in an uproar of terror. I know. I know I must do all in my power to atone for the wrong I did to Esau and to avert the danger of his avenging anger, but what? Would it do any good to send generous gifts to Esau? Yes, it might, at that. At least it would prove to him that I am wealthy in my own right and not seeking my share of father's inheritance. Yes, yes, I will. I'll send many sheep and herds to Esau with another friendly message. Quickly, Jacob organized a group of servants and herdsmen to start out to meet Esau, driving before them a great procession of livestock, all to be presented as gifts of goodwill to Esau. Leading the procession were 220 goats. Some distance behind came more servants, leading 20 donkeys and 10 fillies. Then came shepherds with a sizable flock of sheep. Still another company drove before them 50 head of cattle. Finally came the camel drivers with 30 camels in their coats. Next, Jacob laid plans for the morrow. Reuben? Yes, Father? The first thing in the morning, the entire camp will move forward. Separate the people and herds into two groups. We'll travel separately. If by chance one group is attacked and destroyed, the other will have a chance to escape. Wise strategy, Father. Having done all these things to try to avert the threatened danger, Jacob retired to a quiet spot and, in humiliation and repentance, pleaded for divine protection and guidance. O oh God of mercy and justice, God of all creation, 
Thou didst say unto me, Return to thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal kindly with thee. I obeyed thy voice, O God, and now I am come face to face with danger to my wives and children and to all that I have. Lord of love, I am not worthy of the least of all thy mercies which thou hast showed me, but I plead with thee, deliver me from the hand of my brother Esau. I fear him, O God, lest he come and smite me and my children and their mothers. Be with both our bands as we separate and go forward on the morrow. Guide us, bless us, and thine shall be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, Reuben, you're in charge of one group. I'll take the other, and do be careful. Keep in touch by messenger. I will, Father. Let's go, then. All right, folks, let's get started. Levi, you get your men and lead the way. The women and children will come next, followed by the servants with the flocks and herds. Meanwhile, back in Canaan, Esau has plans of his own. Captain, he's all in readiness. Yes, sir. Let's go, then. As evening came on, Jacob and his band approached the Jabbok River. Levi. Yes, Father? You sent a scout forward to examine the Jabbok River. I did, sir, and he's already back. Reports that the river at this point is only waist deep. Good. Take the band across the river then and camp on the other side. I'll come across in the morning. Yes, sir. It sounds like you're going to stay on this side of the river. I am. Am I going to stay here with you, Jacob? No, Rachel, you go on across. I've decided to spend the entire night in prayer. And I prefer to be alone with God. The spot that Jacob chose for his prayer was in a lonely, mountainous region, the haunt of wild beasts and the lurking place of robbers and murderers. Alone and unprotected, Jacob bowed in deep distress upon the earth. O oh God of heaven, God of Abraham and Isaac, hear me now as I come to thee in my darkest hour of need. All that is dear to me is at a distance, across the river, exposed to danger and death. Bitterest of all to me, O oh God, is the thought that this peril upon my innocent family is the result of my sins. Forgive me, O oh God, forgive me. Protect my family and my servants and their families, for it is my sin, not theirs. Draw near unto Esau, my brother, and soften his heart. Across the river to the west of where Jacob pours out his prayer is the camp of Esau and his 400 soldiers. Esau is asleep. Suddenly he awakens. Guard! Uh, guard! Yes, sir? Uh, get me the captain immediately. I am right here, sir. I was talking to the guard. Oh, good. Now sit down. Sit, sit down. I, I want to tell you something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just had a dream, a very vivid dream. Yes, sir. In my dream, I saw my brother Jacob, 20 years in exile in Mesopotamia. He came home, was grief-stricken at finding his mother dead. And the most vivid thing of all was a host of angels that accompanied my brother and his band to protect them. Now, wh what do you make of the dream, Captain? I... I don't believe in dreams, sir. Well, I do. I think it shows that the God of my fathers is with Jacob, and I... Oh, Captain. Captain, I want you to instruct your men not to harm Jacob. <clears throat> I... I think it would be best, sir, if you yourself told them. Okay, can't you? I can, yes, but their hatred of your brother Jacob is of such long duration that it would be hard to stop them. Unless you tell them the dream like you've told me. All right, all right. In the morning, early assemble them. I'll relate the dream to them. 
Jacob is still praying. Oh, God, I plead with you to forgive my sins. It is midnight. And lay them not to the charge Suddenly, of my family. Suddenly, a strong hand Be reaches out them, of the darkness and takes them, hold of Jacob. And bless them to the everlasting glory of God. <coughs> Jacob thought surely oh. an enemy was seeking his life, oh. and he endeavored to wrest himself from the grasp of his assailant. In the darkness, the two struggled for mastery. Not a word was spoken. Jacob put forth his full strength, not relaxing his effort for one moment. While he was thus struggling for his life, the sense of his guilt pressed upon his soul. His sins rose up before him to shut him out from God. But in his terrible extremity, he remembered God's promises, and his whole heart went out in an entreaty for God's mercy. The struggle continued until near the break of day. Then the stranger deliberately placed his finger on Jacob's thigh. Instantly, Jacob was in terrible pain. Oh, oh my thigh! I, I, I crippled. Oh, oh, I, I know who you are now. You, you're the heavenly messenger. That's why my best efforts could not gain victory over you. Oh, don't, don't you try to get away. I, I won't let you go. I'll cling to you until you bless me. And I want the assurance that my sins are forgiven. I, I am unworthy. I'm sinful, yet I do have faith in a covenant-keeping God. So bless me, angel, please. And the angel said unto Jacob, Let me go, for the day breaketh. <laughs> I will not let thee go unless thou bless me. What is thy name? Jake. Thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And the angel blessed Jacob. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, which means face of God. For, said he, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. At long last, Jacob had received the blessing which he had so earnestly sought. His sins of deceitfulness and trickery were all forgiven. The crisis in his life was past. Peace filled his heart. No longer did he fear to meet his angry brother. Joyfully, Jacob leads his band onward toward the inevitable meeting with Esau and his company of warriors. At last, in the valley, shielded by hills, they approach each other. Esau leading his men of war, Jacob leading his wives and children, attended by shepherds and handmaidens, followed by long lines of flocks and herds. All at once, both bands come to a halt. Slowly, with bated breath, Esau and Jacob approach each other. Jacob, still disabled from the recent encounter with the covenant angel, leans heavily on his staff, halting with pain at each step. Suddenly, Esau runs forward. Jacob. Jacob, Esau, Jacob, my Esau, brother and my twin, oh, my I'm so glad to see you. At long Welcome last home, after Jacob. All these years, how good to see your face again. Holy Scripture says, And Esau ran to meet Jacob, and embraced him, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And they wept. Mm -hmm.